Hey guys, it's Candice Kwaza from Pumalanga. Can you please assist me with these questions? Especially 3.2 and 3.3. Welcome back. Welcome back to your favorite content coverage show. It is called Tenfold Live. Proudly brought to you by Liberty. Do make sure, guys, you actually watch the show because it's going to help you a lot with the math that you're currently focusing on. Remember, we are working on financial mathematics this week and we are putting a lot of emphasis on grade 12 financial maths today. So we want you guys to understand what is going on, particularly considering the fact that tomorrow, if you are from Gauteng province, all the matriculants will be starting with the preliminary exam. So I, show, I hope you guys are watching the show and you're learning a lot about how to handle financial mathematics. We are continuing with our math. Our next question is coming from Candice. Let's go and check it out. Hey guys, it's Candice Kwaza from Pumalanga. Can you please assist me with these questions? Especially 3.2 and 3.3. Right, thank you very much for that, uh, Candice. It's a very nice question indeed. I want you guys to see how do you really analyze these things. Remember what I said. If you owe people money and you don't pay them, they will charge you interest. And how do they charge you interest? They compound whatever you owe them. So let's go into this question and see what the story is and how you really need it to analyze this question, Candice. A very nice question indeed. It says to us here, a car, right, loan of 130000 is repaid over five years by means of equally monthly repayments starting one month after the loan was repaid. Okay, cool. So now that is very important for you to understand. When you take the loan now, the first repayment must be made in one month's time if you want to pay with monthly payments. If you're going to pay later than that, we're going to charge you. If you pay immediately, we need to remove that. It's going to look like it's a deposit of some sort. That's a very interesting argument that you also need to keep in mind. If some money is made immediately, we will remove that as a deposit and then consider the next month as our first monthly payment. Keep that in mind. Right. Let's go back to the question. Very nice indeed. Thank you for this question. It's going to help us to understand a lot of things, guys. A car loan has a value of 130000 So I can clearly see that this is the amount of the loan, which is likely to be our P-value. Um, is repaid over five years. There's your number of payments. Apparently, it's five years by means of equally monthly. This is what allows you to use an annuity. It's continuous. It's the same amount. Annuity only if it's continuous periodic payments. If it was a once-off thing, then you would be looking at a grade 11 question, either a compound growth or a compound depreciation. So once you see the word, when you get the sense in the question, you've got to get the sense in the question that it is continuous. That is what is going to allow you to use an annuity. Other than that, if it's just once of payment, then it's going to be a grade 11 question. It's A value, compound growth or compound depreciation. Keep that in mind, guys. Okay, cool. So starting in one month's time. So I'm happy to see this because it tells me that we want to have uh, a nice straightforward formulae substitution without any funny business. Okay, cool. So according to this question, we are told that it is a loan and then um, calculate the monthly repayments. If the interest on the loan is 7% per annum compounded monthly on a reducing balance. Okay, P, X, I, and N. Very simple stuff. Right, so according to this, we have 130,000 rents. Okay, cool. And then we are looking for the monthly repayments. That's what we are looking for. The interest we are charged is 7%, which is 0 0.07 compounded uh, monthly. So it's going to be over 12. The number of years, it's five years, so we have five multiplied by what? Five multiplied by 12. Now, this is another popular error, guys. Some of you might even call 7% uh, 0, 0,7. Please be careful of that. This is a very, a very uh, common error we see all the time. 0, 0,7 is 70%. If you're not sure, please always use your calculator. 7% is 0, 0,07. Please pay attention to that. All right, so now I'm going to put the PV formula and try to work out the solution here. So according to... Uh, our formula sheet or the information sheet, PV is X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N everything divided by I. Beautiful stuff. Now, I've watched CS video um, show. I also watched Philippa's show. So they used to substitute. They actually been substituting PV and substituting the interest and the I and all that, which is quite cool. So we want you guys to have access to a lot of different things. So I'm going to treat this one a little bit different from the way they've been doing it. So instead of substituting the, v, uh, the PV and the I as well as the N, 
I'm just simply going to start by making x the subject of the formula. So I want this to be the subject. So how do you make that the subject? First of all, you're going to cross multiply the i. And then what's that going to give you? It will give you pi. I'm sure you like pi, right? P times i. And then I'm going to divide by the bracket. That bracket, I'm going to divide by it. So it's going to be over 1 minus 1 plus i to the minus n. And that is the value of x, which is your monthly payment, which is basically what you're looking for. All right, so now let's put in our values. So according to this, x will simply be, what is the, um, the principal, um, the present value? It's 130,000 rands multiplied by the interest, 0 0.07. Right, divided by 12, everything divided by um, the bracket, which is 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.07 over 12, everything to the power negative something. What is something? 5 times 12, which is exactly 60 payments. Right, 5 times 12 is going to give you 60. So now let's go and call the calculator and then use it to try and figure out what the solution is going to be. So I have 130,000 that I owe somebody. And this person is charging me an interest of 0 0.07. This is very simple, guys. All over 12. Right. Everything is divided by 1 minus 1 plus the interest, which is 0 0.07. Everything divided by 12 because it's compounded monthly to the power of negative. Don't forget that minus, guys. You can even put 5 times 12 here so that you can see it's 5 years compounded monthly. What do I end up with? I end up with 2,574. So 2,574 comma what? Okay, comma 16 cents. Right, comma 16 cents. So these are likely to be our monthly repayments. Now, because I know I might need this number later, I'm going to store it in my calculator. There's a lot of variables, A, B, C, D, all the way up to M. You either write the full number or you store it in your calculator. So I want to store it because I'm thinking maybe I might need it and I don't want to lose this number. So I'm going to go shift and then I press the S2O button, which is store, and then I select any letter that I like. So since this is X, I'm going to put it in X. You can put it in any other variable. It is still going to work out. So when I need it, I'm just going to call X, and then it will come out, and I'll be able to use it. Right. Moving on to the next question. We are told here that the client experiences financial difficulties. Right. So then this person is unable to pay uh, the 18th, the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st payment. Calculate the balance of the loan at the end of the 17th payment. So this is outstanding balance. A very nice question indeed. How do you work out the outstanding balance? Please keep that in mind. Right? That is basically what we want. So we understand that from the beginning of time, this person had to pay from T0 until T60. They made the first payment successfully. They made the second payment successfully. They made the third payment and so on and so on until the 17th payment. So this one was the last payment they made. But on the 18th and the 19th and so on and so on, they struggled. They couldn't make any further payments there. Right. So we want to know how much was this person owing at this point in time? How much was the person owing right after this payment, the last, after the last payment? What were you owing before you started having financial difficulties? So we are looking for the outstanding balance, the OB, the outstanding balance. That is basically what you're looking for. All right. Now, there are two ways of working out the outstanding balance, guys. You can use A minus F, which means you take the loan, you compound it, you subtract the future value of the amount you've been paying. You can do it in that way. I don't like using that one. I prefer using the present value formula. So what you need to do there is just take the present value formula and work out the present value of the remaining payments because the present value formula always tells you what you owe people. So I'm going to use that and try to figure out what is the present value of what I still need to pay, which is quite a nice way of looking at it. So I'm going to say my outstanding balance is the present value of what I'm owing. So it's going to be x into 1 minus 1 plus i to the minus n, everything divided by i. Beautiful stuff, guys. Absolutely, absolutely exciting. So the x value is what you've been paying every month. So what have you been paying every month? According to the calculator, we've been paying 2574. So 2574 comma something. What is something? Something is 16. Right. 16 into 1 minus 1 plus. What is the interest we've been working with here? 0 0.07 divided by 12. Everything to the power of what is missing. Now, this is very important. I need you to keep that in mind. The n value you put here is the outstanding payments. The outstanding. The ones that you still need to make, the ones that are still outstanding. How do you work out what is outstanding? Well, go to your calculator and say, how much do I need to pay? I need to pay 60 payments. How much did I successfully make 
According to this question, we made 17 payments. We're still missing 43 payments that we still need to do. So that is what you are putting as your end value. I'm missing 43 payments, right? And then everything is divided by something. What is something? Right? The something is going to be the interest, which is 0 0.07 divided by 12. Beautiful stuff. Then you go to your calculator. You then go into uh, type whatever your x value is there. Remember, we don't want you to round off. So you need the full x value that you had. So I'm going to go alphabet x, right? Because my number is stored in alphabet x. Open bracket, 1 minus, open bracket, 1 plus fraction, 0 0.07, everything divided by something. What is something? 12. Right, divided um, in and then to the power of the missing payments that we still need to make. Keep that in mind. These are the outstanding payments. Divided by 0 0.07, everything divided by 12. Right, and then you're going to get a value of 97,647. So 97,647, comma something. What is something? Comma 58. Right, this is comma 58. So this is the amount of money that this person was owing at that point in time after the 17th payment. And they still need to settle the payments by moving forward and paying for whatever the case might be. You can be asked to move forward and make out either what the new installment has to be or how long it will take the person to settle the loan if they continue making the same payments of uh, whatever the amount we were looking at. So it's a very nice question, Candice. Thank you very much. I hope you understand how to analyze outstanding balance and how to work out with a loan question. Thank you very much for sending it. But right now, we are going to go to a theory video, which is very exciting because it comes from the Tenfold app. It's called Tenfold Education. If you want to see what we have there, check out this. Graduating from high school means the doors to exciting opportunities are finally open. Some may choose to continue studying, while others may decide to go straight into the world of work. At this pivotal stage in your life, you need to make decisions to spend your time wisely, so you capitalize on your youth, and to spend your money wisely to capitalize on time. When you're young, your biggest asset is time. Meet Dex. Dex is an average 23-year-old who has just got his first full-time job. Dex is so excited about earning a salary and can't wait to spend it. He thinks of all the different ways he can spend his money – cars, clothes, shoes and his girlfriend. But he never thinks about how to make his money earn money. Luckily for Dex, his workplace cares about staff financial well-being and gives free financial advice to new employees like Dex. The company sets up a meeting between Dex and a financial advisor, Carl. Dex gets the following advice from Carl. It pays to start saving early. That way you can take full advantage of the effect of compound interest. Money loses value over time, so this makes it more beneficial to have it sooner rather than later. 100 rand in hand today is worth more than 100 rand in a year's time due to inflation and other factors. 100 rand today can be used to invest and earn interest or capital gains. It's not only the amount of money you save that counts, but also the time you have available to start saving. The earlier you start, the more reasonable the amount of money you need to save each month will be. Carl's advice to Dex is to start saving as soon as he starts earning, rather than waiting until he's older. To help Dex understand the importance of saving from an early age, Carl asks him to imagine the following two situations. Suppose Portia starts saving for retirement at the age of 25 by contributing 1,500 rand per month at an average interest rate of 6.6% per year into a retirement annuity. She plans to retire at 65. Without accounting for inflation adjusted increases in contributions, she will end up with over 3.5 million rand. 3 million 521,510 rand. Dave, on the other hand, delays saving for retirement until the age of 35 and starts saving in the same year as Portia started saving by contributing 1,500 rand per month at an average interest rate of 6.6% per year into a retirement annuity. He plans to retire at 65. Without accounting for inflation-adjusted increases in contributions, he will end up with just over 1.6 million rand, 
1,691,879 rand. By delaying saving for retirement by 10 years, Dave will end up with 1.8 million rand less than Portia has when he's ready to retire. This is about half the amount she will be able to save. He would have to more than double his monthly contribution to end up with the same amount as Portia. If Dave started even later, say at age 40, he would need to make a monthly contribution of more than four times as much as Portia's in order to get the same amount as her. So by reducing the time of an investment, you diminish the impact of compound growth. By following Porsche's example, you too will be able to save a whole lot more by starting early. You have to save for retirement as soon as you are able to, even if it seems a million years away.